the average Joe. They're not Joe Sixpack. None of us are. It doesn't matter what our oranges origins were. Mine were, were very poor. But I, I'm not a poor man. What I'm getting at is it's it's almost okay to talk about nice things again, and it's all because of Donald Trump. It's one of the reasons I love Trump is that he's so boastful that he says I'm worth $10 billion. I don't care if it's $5 billion or $8 billion. It doesn't matter to me. He has a beautiful airplane. He has a beautiful helicopter. He has a beautiful country club. He has a beautiful wife. He has beautiful shoes. He has beautiful children. He has made being successful okay again. And I got a little secret for you. Poor people admire him for it. I don't think you understand his appeal to poor people. He is more appealing to the poor person who would like to be rich than that socialist idiot who tells everyone who has money, tells you that everyone who has money is no good. The point I'm making is, it's nice to talk about things that I like without having to hide them. Why should I have to hide talking about an exotic sports car? What, you're liable to think that I have a sports car? I do. So what? I didn't take it from you. I earned it. I earned it. It's that simple. And that's why I would like to talk about these things from time to time. Not today. Maybe another day. Phone number here is 855-407-282. I think my idea on the, uh, on the uh, um, drafting people is really good. And what we're talking about is getting kids who are 18 and up, who are computer experts, computer savvy, who don't want to work for the government. And why, well, I'm not going to go in the military. Are you crazy? I want to make a fortune. I want to go to work for Facebook. I want to go to work for Microsoft. I want to go to work for um, Oracle. I'm not going to go to work for you. I want to go to work for Twitter. Well, it's too bad. Uncle Sam wants you. You're, you're, you're enlisted. Now, I go a step further. I would force the owners of these companies to give up a certain percent of their workforce those in their companies who are not in programming, as we just learned, but on the other side of things, I can guarantee you that they all have divisions in their companies of hackers to stop the hackers who want to hack their companies, okay? Think about it. Use your brain. Flex it. If you were running Facebook, wouldn't you have a whole room full of hackers who are so good at what they do that they stop hackers from hacking Facebook? Yes? Enlist them. Draft them. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-BUICO. Should the Selective Service selectively draft computer-savvy people in order to uh, conduct a war against terrorist organizations is the topic. We stumbled upon it, and it's a takeoff from the debate last night where Donald Trump wisely said that he is open to closing areas of the Internet around the world. And, of course, the idiot Wolf Blitzer tried to make it sound as though he wanted to shut the Internet down in America. And then, of course, he was jumped on by, by the, 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 the zany Rand Paul, who said he wasn't you know, constitutionally uh, equipped to make a statement like that, whatever. Well, this is talk radio for me. That I, I, I like. I mean, I, I gotta tell you something. I love talk radio when the ideas are percolating like this and I get callers like I've been getting, like the, the guy who was in the hacker community. Well, here's another one now. You ready for this? Benjamin, WVNN Radio. Welcome to the program. What's your opinion on the drafting of selective individuals in the computer industry? Um, as a 33-year-old who's been in IT since he was 17 and who has taught uh, uh, collegially IT for nine years, I'm completely against this idea. The military has apparatus already in place. If they want to bo uh, bolster their cyber warfare apparatus, they already have a means of doing that. There's no reason to have to reinstate a selective service draft, particularly for... Oh, no, hold it. I'm not, I'm not denying that what you're saying is, is in... I'm not saying it's invalid. I want you to explain why the military, how the military already can do this. Well, because they can just pay more. They can hire more. I'm from Huntsville, Alabama. We're one of the third largest IT cities in the country behind uh, San Francisco and behind Austin. You can't throw a rock without hitting an IT company, be it that are directly working for the DOD, that are a shell company for the DOD, et cetera. They can pay more for the positions. We want to talk right, about... Hold on. I'm, I'm learning something. I'm learning something, as are many of my listeners. What you're saying is we don't need a selective draft because... We already have contractors providing these services to the DOD? There are already dozens of companies that are providing... Well, good. No, I'm listening to you very carefully that I have a little simple question for you, Mr. IT. 
How come we're losing the cyber war if we have so many contractors working already? They don't want to pay. They don't want to pay the rates that everyone's wanting to pay. Because, yes, Facebook will pay more. Because these other third-party companies that aren't huge companies like Microsoft will pay more. If you want to get good people, people that are certified like I am, that are that have the qualifications to meet DOD 85-7. Benjamin, do you, Benjamin, let me say this. In World War II, when we were fighting for our survival long before my time, there was a draft and they took the cream of the crop along with the 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 the, the, the bottom uh, feeders into the military they took in doctors lawyers engineers do you think every one of them wanted to go into the military i'm sure they would rather have stayed home and made a good living but they couldn't they were required for the war effort benjamin there was also a great number of those incredibly skilled people that signed up for it as well. What I'm saying is that for a selective service, you would be removing a significant portion of the people that are already running the existing military and civilian Internet infrastructures. And the right, So I would say then leave, leave them alone and go, and, and go to the next level of people who are not serving in, in, through a private contractor. Look, Benjamin, we're all in this together. Liberal, conservative, it doesn't matter, black, white, gay, straight. They're bombing us. They're killing us. They're going to take over the country unless they're stopped. And apparently the frontier of this effort is in the, is in the uh, Internet area. I, I completely agree. And our, civil, our cyber warfare initiative has been severely lacking over the last two, possibly three presidents, because no one's wanted to take this seriously. Now, a previous caller talked... Well, no, I disagree with that. That's not the reason. The reason is, is because the, the buccaneers who run the IT business... The trillionaires who own this business are not willing to give up the talent to the government. You know and I know it's all about greed and it's all about profit. They wouldn't give up a dime unless they have to. That's what I'm talking about. Force Microsoft, force Facebook, force Twitter, force Oracle to give up some of their best individuals. Then, then you'll make a dent against ISIS. And the reason we're not is because they haven't been forced to is because Obama goes to them for fundraising, for example, as did Bush. As do all of them on that stage last night, except Donald Trump, didn't go there with his hand out. They own them lock, stock, and barrel. They don't want to give up a, a worker, for God's sakes. Now you want the federal government to step into private business and tell them who they can and can't hire and what they can and cannot pay? No, I didn't, I didn't say that. No, no. I said take away some of their workers and, put, and enlist them into the military. That's a little different. Hey, I, I didn't ask the federal government to tell them what to do. I said take some of their best workers and use them in the war effort. Listen, you and I can argue over this today or tomorrow, and others can chime in on radio shows and call me every name under the sun. What I'm suggesting is going to happen in our lifetime, as sure as I'm standing here. There will be a selective draft for individuals who are necessary for the war effort, whether we like it or not. It's going to happen. That's what's going to have to happen, because people by nature would not want to enlist. They'd rather stay here and, and go to work for a good company and not uh, not be in a military situation. I don't blame them, but that's what's going to have to be done, because they're not going to go into the military. Benjamin, I'm sending you a copy of Government Zero. I'll give you an example in the, in the few seconds that remain in this hour. I know I lose certain affiliates after hour two, and I have another huge hour in most of them with most of my uh, stations. My ex, my ex, my deceased father-in-law, one of the finest men I ever met in my life. He died a number of years ago. This man had young children. He had just graduated Harvard Law School. He was drafted into the military in World War II and made a naval officer. Well, he spent years of his life there. And he came out a broken man in some ways. It took him years to recover when he saw his fellow sailors blown up next to him on a ship. A man he was talking to one second was dead next. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I would certainly be open to closing areas where we are at war with somebody. I sure as hell don't want to let people that want to kill us and kill our nation use our Internet. Yes, sir, I am. That came out of last night's debates, and we've been talking about that for a while, where Trump was misinterpreted once again and set up by the moron blitzer, the left-wing operative, the wobbly. And, of course, he was then attacked by Rand Paul, the bizarre and uh, was set to say something he never said, which I'm used to myself. They take something you say and then twist it into something you didn't even say and then say you said it, and then start debating what, whether what you said is right or wrong. <clears throat> Trump said, 
is to get our brilliant people from Silicon Valley and figure out a way to stop ISIS from doing what they're doing. I agree a thousand percent, but I went a step further. I wouldn't get our brilliant people and ask them to do it. I would require them to do it. The buccaneers of the Internet fortunes, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, Bill Gates of uh, Microsoft, Larry Ellison of Oracle, they're brilliant people, very successful. They have more money than they could ever spend for the next 10,000 years. And yet they want cheaper labor. My best estimate is why they push a guy like Rubio is because he's for open borders so they can bring in tech workers from India, for example, who will work for half the amount of money that an American worker will work for. This is how sickening this is. And if we had a legitimate government, they wouldn't be allowed to take money from the buccaneers who have capitalized on these superhighways. They wouldn't be allowed to take money from the buccaneers. They'd force the buccaneers to do the right thing. And what do I mean by do the right thing? Well, there's a lot of things they could be doing that they're not doing this war on terror. And one of the things we're talking about is bringing back a selective, selective service, a selective, selective service that targets IT workers who can go to work for the government as hackers to take down ISIS websites, Al-Qaeda websites. Uh, and then we need programmers to program positive information for the youth of America to make them love the country again and want to help the country again. And then you're going to be involved in a cyber war that you might win. And until we do that, we're not going to win this war. We're going to continue to lose it. And the reason we're losing it is because the buccaneers of the super of the superhighway pay the politicians off. Well, what do you think Obama does when he goes to Silicon Valley and he gets $30,000 a head for a speech? Why do you think that they organize these speeches for him? It's to keep him from demanding anything of them. It's cheap. What does it cost them? Nothing. You give them thirty grand. They don't give them anything. They throw together a dinner somewhere in a hotel. They have an entertainer. Some some guy comes along and does a song for them, and then they get to uh, keep you know cashing it in. So if we want to win the war, we have to do it intelligently. It has to be done along the lines of World War Two. Which and I remind you, men like Sarnoff, whose name you have probably forgotten by now, Sarnoff owned NBC, the national broadcasting. Uh, uh, a, a network, whatever it was called, and BC. Well, Asanoff was the, either the general manager, or the owner. He was in the family that created a, a RCA and NBC, I believe. Sonoff enlisted in the military as a colonel for one dollar a year to lend his brilliance in organization and planning as a businessman for the war effort to defeat Hitler and to defeat Japan. Did you know that? And he was one of many great men in American industry who actually enlisted in the military at a dollar a year in order to defeat Hitler. You don't know that. Now tell me why Bill Gates hasn't enlisted in the military to defeat ISIS. Tell me why Zuckerberg hasn't enlisted any of his company to defeat ISIS. Well, I'll let you figure out why. You know, there's probably a n number of reasons. The number one reason is the profit motive. And if we no longer have patriots at that level, then we have to force patriotism upon, patriotism upon them. And that's what we're talking about on the Savage Nation today. And we do have some phenomenally great callers. It's good radio today. I'm glad to see that we have such great ideas. And now we have a hacker calling from MAL in Washington. John, go ahead, please. You are a, you are a self-defined hacker, correct? No, sir. I'm a certified ethical hacker. <laughs> Okay, I know that you're rebellious, so I knew you wouldn't agree with me, even if I said something you agreed with. But what do you actually do? Uh, so I currently support the uh, federal government in um, in protecting uh, our diplomats overseas. Uh, some of that involves cyber realm, yes. Okay, so you are working for the government, but as a private contractor, or were you were you drafted? Uh, no, I served my. Uh, I enlisted out of, in, out of high school, and I served almost a decade in the military in some very sensitive roles. And uh, now I'm a private contractor. Good. Okay. Do you agree or disagree with my idea? And why do you disagree with it? If you do, and I think you disagree with my idea of drafting uh, selectively, why do you disagree? I do only because I've been at that level and I know how those operations go down and the apparatus. And some of your callers have briefly touched on this. The apparatus that these the people that do these things, and there's already entities out there that do this, um, the apparatus that they use to do this requires access to systems.